Welcome back to Blitzkrieg Intel Update. I'm Nabbers Hunter here with TAC, Water KH, and Liz is a Dolphin to discuss the Gorod Krofi cipher scraps, the MASM assembly language ciphers that we call the Pablo cipher and the King cipher. Water, so you kind of led the charge with this last night in transcribing the program and really sticking with it. You want to tell our viewers how this kind of unfolded? Yeah, um, so I know a little bit of the community found some scraps. Liz actually handed me off um, kind of the, the compiled versions of these scraps mentioning that there is some kind of uh, assembly language. So I actually had a little bit of experience working with MIPS, which is kind of what Unix and Mac kind of use for compiling. Um, so when I finished it, I tried to run it, but it actually doesn't work on Mac because it's a Windows assembly language. So it was me, Tag, Liz is a Dolphin, Hunter, and Oxen8 that actually transcribed these numbers from the scraps of paper and fed it into the program, which gave us our answers. And that took us, what, like uh, nine and a half hours, I believe it was. Yeah, of course, crazy. Tack had been on the phone for even longer. He w reached a grand total of like 11 and a half hours that night. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the plain text now. Another thing that I want to note before I start is that there are a couple things that didn't ever quite come out right. Two different words. So I will make note of those as I come to them. My name is Pablo, or at least I think it is, or was. I don't know anymore. I have been locked away, held prisoner in this cell for many months by German scientists. They keep experimenting on me, pumping me full of some blue liquid. I think it is responsible for the repeated visions I have been having, which I swear look and feel real. In this vision, my name is Pablo Marinus, and I am a knight coming back from the Crusades. This is one of the words that we couldn't quite get right. Ivan fight in a great battle against strange demon-like creatures who are trying to devour the earth. At one point, it appears I am doomed, trapped in the tentacles of a great three-headed beast, when suddenly four knights decimate it with magical elemental staves, saving me from certain death. There are, and here's another word, I-H-F-F, otherworldly creatures that fight on our side against the demons. The creepy thing is that the sigils on their tunics resemble the ones I noticed on stones here at the castle as I was being brought to my cell. I just hope I can eventually find a way to escape this. So that was the Pablo cipher. The second cipher was another collection of scraps that were found that we call the King cipher, which is as follows. While I consider myself to be a brave king in battle, I will tell you, my son, that those four were the bravest warriors I have ever seen. I had the privilege to fight alongside them in the great battle many years ago, where we defeated the creatures from beyond and the Dead Eaters. They disappeared after we claimed victory, never to be heard from again. The last thing they told me was to build my castle here, in this very location, before they disappeared. Woof. I, I, I'm going to say Good it right job, now. Man. We, <laughs> we uh, I'm not even going to say it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, this is, this is almost like outside of the zombie storyline, it feels. Like, this is, this is, it switches from, like, German scientists and experimentation to straight-up documentation of the medieval activity that we've seen depicted on a number of occasions as far back as Origins. So we'll start with Liz. Liz, what are your thoughts on the Pablo cipher? It is so interesting just hearing from a character who we've only heard of a few times before, and for him to give us such a big piece of information. I mean, we've only heard of him back in Origins, where Rick Defin mentioned in one of his letters from the field that he had his diary or journal. And then we also saw in Their Eyes and Drach that there was a spleen in a plate sort of thing that had the name Pablo on it. So to see that mixed in with all of the great battle and, you know, these magical elemental staves. Really interesting cast back to Origins there. Like, out of the blue, all of a sudden, here are the, here are the staves again. Kind of a reference to Primus and to the, the scraps that we got in Origins that depicted Primus. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, holes that were actually filled in in that, in that one there. So, Tack, you had a bit of a controversial perspective on this cipher as well. Uh, you want to expound on that? Yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'll start this off. I'm not going to claim this is anything other than, you know, uh, me postulating this or speculating. Um, but, you know, the way that he says, my name is Pablo, or at least I think it is, or was, 
you know, that part. And then where he says, uh, you know, he's having a lot of visions and he says, in this vision, my name is Pablo Marinus and I'm a knight coming back from the Crusades. Like, it makes me wonder if this individual who they're pumping full of, you know, liquid divinium, if it's even Pablo. I, it, I don't know, all the phrasing about how, you know, the, they, he thinks he's Pablo, you know, but he might not be. It kind of, I don't know who that means it would be, or, you know, what exactly that means, but I just, I find it really interesting that they kind of open that door up. I don't know, I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, so going off that a little bit, uh, there was a, actually a cipher solved in ZNS that um, kind of gives me the same kind of feeling. And it starts off as, my name is my name. My name? Oh, yes, it is Gersh. So it's kind of like he's remembering it, but it's like it takes him a minute. So he's kind of like, he doesn't know who his identity is. Kind of like in here, where Pablo is very unclear of his um, identity. This seems to be happening repeatedly. That's a good point. There are a number of individuals who are not even quite sure of their own identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... You know, it should also be brought up as the uh, the Monty quotes have started kind of pouring in. Uh, he makes a comment to Dempsey about how Dempsey is giving back field reports to absolutely no one because of the 115 delusion. So, you know, I guess going off of this Pablo Marinus cipher, you know, perhaps my interpretation is entirely wrong. And, you know, it's just the just the illusions or just the 115 just kind of just kind of messing with him. And it's nothing more than that. That's what makes that's one of the thing, factors that makes so much difficult at this point is that we're be really really beginning to see and experience the effects of 115 on the minds of the people who've been exposed to it whereas in the past in black ops 1 and and world at war and so on or you know we heard more about more about it in retrospect and not so much actively here it's right. in ciphers it's in character quotes and it's very very in our face so it's very real yeah it's it we're, we're getting to the point where i think that maxis has always been at where we can't be sure of what's real and what isn't anymore so moving a little bit down, we have that part where it says Ivan fight in a great battle against strange demon-like creatures. Um, and then a little bit more down, it says trapped in the tentacles of a great three-headed beast. And we, we've seen that beast actually in Shadows of Evil, which is the Margwa. And also um, on the mural in the Pack-a-Punch room kind of depicts this kind of great battle with all these creatures and keepers. And then it has those four knights with the staves. Um, which most people think is Primus. And actually the king is on that on that mural as well, isn't he? A king, or at least a king. not Maybe not the king. A, yeah, that's right, a king. And then even farther down towards the end of the cipher, you know, it talks about the otherworldly creatures that are fighting, you know, with with these four warriors, or the four knights. Um, and he talks about as he's being escorted to the to Derizendrak, to the castle, uh, he noticed the sigils on their tunics, and... As you'll see on screen, that is those. That's the keepers. You can see the uh, imprints in the wall match very closely the uh, the depictions on their on their tunics and their their armor and whatnot. So you know that should be pointed out that those are those are keepers that he's referring to there. And these are those objects that we actually uh, power up in the uh, Derizen Dach Easter egg, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And also another thing to note about sigils is that there's some kind of like magical symbols they like hold some kind yeah, of yeah they are so magical it's... symbols that you generally put your will into when you create them although generally in this way it's not talking about what is seen as a sigil today it's a bit different this the sigil is what looks like a version of the black sun that we have seen elsewhere okay all right so let's move along to the um king cipher uh, it's, it's from the perspective of a king talking to his son. Um, we discussed before before recording, and apparently we have some differing views, and I think all of them are very interesting. Now, what I kind of gathered from this was that the king that we're seeing in, in the Dereisendrache paintings for the wolf bow specifically, that king is not the same as is speaking in this cipher. Like I said, this is my perspective of it. I would say that king is the son that is being referred to, specifically because in the paintings, in the, in the paintings we see that the king actually dies in the battle against the Apothecons, also that the castle is already built by the time of this attack. So in the cipher, the castle, number one, has not been built, and the king actually survives the great battle with the you know otherworldly beings so that would seem to indicate to me just based on the fact that the king didn't survive and the castle exists that the king in those 
paintings is actually the son who's being referred to in the ciphers. And just as a just as a, like a general counterpoint, just to kind of get some discussion going, this cipher could have been actually created before the attack. So it it could be that this king that we're talking about is the king in the paintings, um, but this is just before he's built it, and then after he's built it, then the attack comes and then he passes away. That is also a possibility. That's true. Attack, however, you had an opposing view on that. Um, you want to talk further? Yeah, well, you know, this was kind of before I had heard your interpretation about it being the sun, because that's something I had... I hadn't really thought of, and now that you bring it up, I think it's, you know, I think it's a great point. But my, when I first saw this, my initial thought was, um, you know, how could that... Yeah, in, in Dreisendrock, we see the painting of the Apothecon, uh, or the Kraken, you know, as we like to call it, uh, attacking the attacking the castle. So I was trying to figure out, you know, if that wasn't the the great battle... Uh, that was being depicted there what exactly would that be and so i thought maybe you know that's the one to come you know since we keep on having these ideas of we are going to go into the future and we're going to have not go into the future but we're going to go into the next map and have this this huge great battle you know pretty much redo it uh rehash it out with with everyone with the apothecons and keepers and all that so i was thinking maybe that would be a futuristic depiction of that but you know now that I look at it, that doesn't quite make a whole lot of sense. So I'm going to rescind that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for another jam-packed episode. And folks, thanks so much for watching. We will see you all in the next one.